Hey guys, welcome back to Home Build. And in this episode, we're gonna work out how to actually connect up my radiator to the engine. All right guys, welcome back. And uh, I'll just go over a couple of points that people kept bringing up in the uh, comments from the last episode. Uh, it, it was obviously uh, a bad camera angle that I had, but this uh, radiator overflow uh, tank or expansion tank is actually higher than the radiator. That is, uh, uh, it's at least uh, an inch or so higher. It's probably hard to see in these angles, but trust me, I made sure it's definitely higher. So um, I might actually change things on that even after all the work I did that, but uh, that'll come later. It's fine to stay there for now and uh, we can move forward on doing something else. So uh, a lot of you saw that I actually removed the, uh, we have it right here, the, uh, the massive Ferrari factory uh, water pump. So this is a big complicated unit with a thermostat in it and all that sort of stuff, and I'm not using it. I can resell this, it means it's uh, helped to subsidize the cost of the engine. In its place, I will be using this, which is an electric water pump, uh, some, show concern about its size. This is actually rated for uh, sort of big, uh, high horsepower, big V8s and stuff. Um, this thing is apparently uh, fantastic, more than enough for the job. And uh, I probably could have even gone one size down from this, but uh, this is going to be perfect. It's uh, something that you can, I can actually program it and make it ramp up and ramp down. So this um, basically means that I no longer have to run a thermostat on the car. Uh, with the uh, temperature sensors, I can actually turn this on or off and maybe at the start give it small flows. And then uh, as the engine warms up, I can increase the flow and uh, and also balance that in with the fans on the, uh, on the radiator as well. So, no need for a thermostat anymore. It can all be controlled by the ECU, which is which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, as I said, this will do more than enough of the job. But the issue with removing the old uh, water pump is that it bolts onto the front of the engine. And now I need to try and make some way to adapt this water pump and uh, the hoses from the radiator onto the engine. All right, so my challenge for today is the electric water pump sits down here in this bottom corner down here, something like that. And this outlet's gonna come up and go into this part of the engine in here. That's where the original water pump bolted on in here. And I need to make an adapter to go in there somehow. I have four bolting points that I can use, and I have the part where the uh, water needs to go into the engine back from the water pump. Now the water comes out of the engine over here. So it obviously goes into the engine, it travels through all the water galleries, comes back up through this, these uh, center rails, and then through this and back. Normally it would go back to the, uh, the water pump here and go to the thermostat and then go to the radiator if necessary. This is going to go directly back to the radiator. Now to join this to the radiator, what I'm thinking is I'm going to run it through a plate that I'm going to build for this center section here, join it up and uh, the radiator will join onto that plate. So probably doesn't make any sense at the moment, but I'm going to start trying to uh, mark out and build my adapter plate. All right, I uh, got a little piece of manila folder and just did the dirty finger trick to try and get a rough design. And uh, I've copied it onto a piece of uh, 12 mil thick aluminum plate. And this is what I'm gonna be uh, cutting my adapter plate out of. Now, I am not happy, even though it doesn't have to be crazy accurate, I'm not really happy with just using the dirty finger method to try and sort of get the center of these holes. I want to make it a little bit more accurate. This will give me a uh, this gives me a rough shape so I can get the uh, the plate close. But uh, to get it more accurate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some center punches. Uh, I suppose you call them. I can't remember what you call them, but uh, basically I'm going to take some M8 bolts, which are the bolts that I need for the uh, the piece, uh, cut the head off, and uh, I'll show you what I do to make them so I can actually transfer uh, the 
holes exactly into my plate. So you got this little tiny transfer punch and I will show you now how they work. So I screw them in where I want my bolt holes. All right, so I've got my transfer punches in the holes and I've now cut out my basic mock-up piece. Uh, this is roughly to the cardboard template I made uh, and this will sit in here just nicely. So that's the, uh, that's the plate I need. So I line this up, get it in the perfect spot and then I whack it with a hammer and I should have the, uh, the, the holes, the dents, where I need to drill my holes. That's the theory, let's see if it works. All right, well that was uh, an hour or so of frustration. One of these holes has, it must have got a piece of bolt or something stuck in it in the, uh, in the Ferrari block itself. Trying to tap it out and getting access to the hole and stuff is just was really difficult, but I've managed to do it and now I've got my plate bolted on where it needs to be. So um, that's a win. Now I need to start looking at what I'm going to do about making the, uh, the other hole line up with the uh, actual inlet of the engine itself. That might be a bit more difficult. Alright, so my plate is now bolted on, uh, the hole is cut out, it is not a, uh, a perfect fit, it's slightly bigger than what was there, that is not going to be an issue, that's good. So we have the basis for the adapter plate ready to go. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to make a, I want to join up that uh, pipe you can see in the back there through this plate here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another hole in the middle here that clears so that we can uh, basically have a joiner from here to there. So in my typical fashion, uh, I just went to refit the uh, fan shroud to the back of the radio and the outlet that I put on the radio last week obviously interferes with the, uh, the fan shroud. So it's back to the drawing board again on this and I need to do some clearancing to make sure that it actually fits and I can then fit my, um, my water pump onto it. So let's start uh, trimming where I need to trim. Okay, so my design has evolved slightly over the time. I've just sort of neatened up some of the edges and uh, made it a bit of a neater shape. Uh, there's a bit of a groove here, which uh, will become more apparent later. Uh, and the next thing is I'm going to weld on my inlet pipe uh, from the radiator is gonna go on here. So uh, this is slightly larger than this hole, but I can go through with the die grinder and tidy it up once I have welded it on. So let's uh, get, uh, the TIG fired up and uh, clean everything up and see how we go TIGging this together. This is going to be fun because this is really thin and this is really thick. So I'm going to get some heat into this to try and get it to, uh, to weld. Let's see how it goes.
right, so you might be wondering what I've done here, but uh, basically I've got a, a mount that I'm going to put a tube through and weld it to the weld it to the mount so then I can actually uh, bolt on the center tube. I'll, I'll go and mount in the car now and you sort of see what I'm doing. But that mount looks nice and neat and tidy. The, uh, the whole thing is actually starting to look like a, um, a reasonable bit of gear. So the next thing I need to tackle is now that I've got my adapter plate, uh, the issue is, is the back of it is uh, is pretty messed up and uh, and it's warped a bit and stuff from the welding, which I knew it would happen. So to get it nice and flat, so I've got a good clean mating surface, surface um, I'm going to stick it in the lathe and uh, let's see if we can get a nice skim on this and get it nice and flat and smooth. So that is why you don't mess around with lathes. So I touched the, uh, the wrong arm. I was thinking I was locking in the, uh, the bed and I actually engaged the drive and it drove the, uh, the cutter straight into my piece and it locked up, it stopped. Thankfully it stopped very quickly and uh, it's made a big gouge, but it's not the end of the world. I can tidy up uh, the bulk of it now and, uh, and make it a bit better, but it just goes to show, don't mess with lathes. Idiot. Well, a machinist, I definitely am not. I am definitely a novice on the lathe. I need a lot more practice. Um, I've got the whole surface skimmed pretty much on this piece, but it's not super flat. I don't know uh, how well this is gonna pick it up. I was using a lot of um, WD-40 and I had the speed set um, as high as that lathe goes. Uh, and um, I still get a lot of surface in this. I don't know whether I should be going slower, should I be going faster. I'm, I just don't know enough about uh, using a lathe yet, but uh, that is good enough for now. I'm going to uh, finish it off on the linisher. It's nice and flat now, so I should be able to get that to just a nice flat, even surface on that. And, uh, and then this part is done. That was a lot of time on the linisher sorting out the mess that I made on the lathe. Um, I should have just gone on the linisher to start with, but uh, in any case, it's nice and flat now. I have a nice, flat, clean, smooth surface that I should be able to uh, put it onto that uh, thing. I'm gonna use some sort of RTV or something to actually sort of seal it in there. Uh, that I think should do the job nicely. So my basic thing is done, except for one little bit, which is putting a bead on the end of this. I also then have to put uh, beads on the either end of this piece and uh, We'll bolt them in the car and uh, see how they look. All right, I'm really happy with that. That's, uh, that's all in there now. So I've got my uh, tube going from the top of the radiator across. I've got a couple of 90 degree raceworks uh, fittings in there. I've got a little joiner that I just made up to uh, join those two pieces together. So that will work nicely. I do need to trim out the, uh, the fan shroud on the other side now because um, the silicon hose actually butts up against it just on, on, the, uh, on the edge of it over here. So more trimming on that to do. So all the plumbing to the engine is almost done. But there's one last thing that I'm going to need to um, add into this mix. So that brings me to my heater. And uh, I, I am gonna be running a heater in this car. It is gonna be a street car, so I do want heating. Um, pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to fit air conditioning into this car, there's just no space, but I can at least have heating for the time being. Now, 
Uh, those of you who might not understand actually how a normal heater works in a car, it's uh, basically like another radiator. So there's, a, there's another radiator core heat exchanger inside your heater box under your dash of your car. And generally it uh, pumps a bit of water in through that heater core and uh, blows air through it. And that's that hot water from the engine is what actually gives you your heat in your car which is why it's so complicated on the 911. And if you want to have a look more at how that's done, you can go back to my heat exchanges episode. I might uh, put a link up in the corner up here. Um, but uh, that's an, a good, also a good point for people who do have old cars. If you have old cars that are overheating on a hot day, that's why it's a good idea to crank the heater in the car. Um, that'll actually give you extra cooling. It might not be comfortable in the car, but you can actually watch your temperature gauge fall often if you're uh, having heating problems. Uh, because that will uh, actually help cool the engine down more. Anyway, uh, connecting this up means I need a water line in and a water line out. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that now. So the water into the radiator goes in through the hole over here on the uh, firewall and the water out comes out, out of this hole over here. So I need to be able to get some water to those areas. So what I'm going to do is in this centre tube that I've put in, I'm going to put in a couple of angled fittings in there, one um, going with, with the flow of water. So the water is going to be coming out of the engine and going in this direction. So the, uh, I'm going to make an angle that goes that way off of that tube, turns around and goes back into the heater, and then it will, join, it will return back to this same tube in from this side. So let's take this piece out now and start making up some fittings. Okay, so uh, I am pretty happy with how that all turned out. This centre tube, the uh, welding on the uh, these sort of angled tubes to the centre tube, they're both really thin aluminium, so it was uh, quite difficult to do. Um, not the prettiest welds I've done, but uh, they are functional, and uh, I've just mocked up a couple of Raceworks AN lines here. I'll just have to uh, order some more bulkhead fittings and stuff for that, and uh, we can go forward on them. So... I'm really happy. It is, it is looking great. So basically I have all of my radiator stuff is all mocked up now. It's all ready to go. Uh, I just remembered one last thing is I need to redo these mounts um, and put them over on the side. So I'll do that in the next episode, but I am definitely out of time. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 2003 saw Alfa Romeo release their new coupe, the GT. It was based on Fiat C platform, like the 156, and it was styled by Batoni. It was marketed as a practical sports car, as it had seating for five with a full rear bench. Unlike some of its competitors, like the BMW 3 Series coupe with its 2 plus 2 seating. It was available with a range of Alfa's four-cylinder petrol and diesel engines, but the most fun was with the 240 horsepower 3.2 litre Busso V6. They made a limited edition called the Centenario. There were 100 cars for Australia, 30 for South Africa to celebrate Alfa Romeo's 100th birthday. Bertoni unveiled a convertible version of the GT in 2011, hoping to get it made at their own plant, but it never came to fruition and ultimately resulted in their bankruptcy when they were bought out by Fiat. All right, that was a lot more fun fabricating this week. Um, I'm really enjoying sort of playing with this uh, aluminium and starting to sort of learning my TIG welding skills. They're still far from perfect, but they're getting there. And it's, uh, it's, it's coming together. The mechanicals of this car are getting very close, which is great. So great. Can't believe it. <laughs> no, it's like, <laughs> it's just one car finished. Yeah, All right. it will get finished eventually, but um, there's no hurry. That's right, like, enjoy the journey. That's right. The build is half the fun. Mm. Mm. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying. <laughs> yes. Oh. And, uh, and uh, if you'd like to see the shows a day earlier, please join us on Patreon, Patreon. and you get to see them without the ads, yes, which is a big free. bonus. Yes. yes. But uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and uh, Facebook for sort of little tips of what's going on uh, ahead of time. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Hi, everybody. Oh. Here we are. Romeo released their new... <sighs>
Kanye West. It was based on this Fiat C flat thought. Like BMWs, mmm. That was pretty awesome. 3.2 liter, Busefi 6.